Alright guys, what's going on? So, I am back here with the second part of my scabbard making video. Woohoo! So yeah, this is the second part. If you haven't seen the first part, click on the screen right now or in the description to go check that out. So you'll get caught up in everything on what I'm doing with this project and kind of how it's going so far. So let's get right into it. So the majority of this second part will be sanding. Sanding is probably the thing that'll take you the most if you're doing this project yourself, just because you know it to get the shape right. Uh, it takes kind of a while to get it where you want it. Like I said in the last video, definitely make sure to watch yourself when you're sanding, both I guess with your fingers so you don't cut yourself or something like that, and the wood. So the wheel actually underneath the belt, if you are doing large areas, if you just put your uh, piece of wood flat on the sander like that, like kind of what I'm doing here now, uh, the wheel lower down where you're holding the wood will actually create a divot where the wheel is, so you wanna you're gonna wanna keep out keep an eye out for that. Also make sure not to stay in one spot for too long when you're doing large areas. Uh, make sure to move it around a lot just so you know there's no uh, like lower spots, little lower divots or if there's any high spots, make sure to keep moving it around. So, like I was saying before, this is probably the part of the project that will take you the longest. For me, it took me about four months-ish, kind of off and on, working on it. But I'm sure if you, uh, like, worked on it every day for a couple hours each day, you could probably get it done in half that time, if not less. So, kind of what I'm trying to do for the shape here is sand out the edges and the corners to make it more... Uh, gradual, kind of like what an actual sword looks like, how it's thickest in the middle and, you know, thinner on the edges. And I don't want it to come to like a point on the edges, I want it to be rounded off. So that's what I'm trying to do here. As you can see, and I guess at the, at the very tip it'll taper down as well. So yeah, as you can see, I am trying to work on a lot of it equally and moving it around a lot and making sure I'm trying to stay off that wheel as much as possible unless I'm you know going up and down the edge of it on the kind of side of the sander also make sure when you're doing this you have at least a decent belt for your belt sander uh, that's to keep it from burning the wood and to make sure you you know have a good belt so it will chop off as much material as it can. The belt that we actually found on the sander when I first got it was actually pretty crappy so I had to go out and buy a couple new belts. I think one of them, I can't remember the exact grits, but I got like a low, medium, and high so that when I got the main shape that I wanted I could step it up a little bit to actually refine it and make it smoother. So after you're done on the belt sander you're going to want to get some really fine sandpaper and do it by hand that way. Uh, also, before you actually start sanding this, I sanding it, I probably should have said this earlier, but you really need to figure out how thick your uh, cavity is so as to not cut into that and then pretty much ruin the entire project unless you wanted unless you like cover it up with some filler of some sort. You can see here that I'm actually using the edge of the of the belt sander to get those edges of the wood sawed down pretty nice. Again, just moving back and forth a lot with the piece of wood to get everything pretty smooth and even. Alright, so here, what my original plan was, was to make these uh, little designs out of sheets of plastic, and it's called Sintra. I don't know if you've heard of it before, but if you want to try it this way, then I'll leave a link in the description to where you can buy some. But basically what it is, is it's a little sheet of plastic, and what I did was I just traced on a template of what I wanted, and then I cut it with an X-Acto knife. And basically what you do is after you cut it, you uh, put it on whatever you want it, whatever you want, and then you use a hot, you, you use a hot gun 
No, not hot gun. I keep wanting to say hot glue gun, but it's a heat gun. You use a heat gun to form it, and after it cools, it'll become rigid and hold its shape. But I ended up not using this just because it became really hard to get it the way I wanted it, and I just decided to give up on it and go with painting instead. So again, if you want to try this out for yourself, or if you have some experience with Sintra, then I will leave a link in the description to where I bought mine. I think it was like 10 of these sheets, uh, it's like normal paper size, 10 of them for $15, something like that. But I thought it was going to be a lot more expensive, but it actually wasn't that bad. Okay, so now we're getting on to the uh, black finish of the sword. So what I actually am using here is stain instead of paint. So the reason I did that was so you can kind of see the wood grain after it's completely done. Also, before you start painting your, or staining your sword, whichever one you want to do, make sure it's completely clean of sawdust and all that good stuff. Also, make sure it's as smooth as you want it because you're not going to be sanding it anymore. Bef uh, when you get your primer, not primer, when you get your stain, you want to make sure you mix it up really good before you start painting or staining or anything like that. When you're staining, you want to put a good amount on, and then after you've let, it, you've let the wood soak it up a little bit, you're going to want to wipe it off with a cloth there that you saw. And that'll just get rid of any excess stain left over so it doesn't dry on like a hard crust and you'll still be able to see the grain of the wood and it'll look really quite pretty. Okay, so for the painting prep, basically what I did was I drew the details from my design onto the wood itself with just a normal pencil. With, uh, when you're doing this part, you're going to want to be as precise as possible, just because uh, this is where a lot of the cool design is going to come into effect. Although, when I was doing it, I was actually kind of sloppy, and a lot of the stuff wasn't centered very well, so that really hurt me in the long run, just because it doesn't look as good as I would like it to, but I don't know. Maybe I'll, you know, I don't know, maybe I'll try and resurrect it somehow and fix it. You can see I'm actually using a interesting type of eraser. It's not a normal eraser, it's called a kneadable eraser. Basically what it is, is it's an eraser that you can, well, knead and shape in the way you want. And instead of pushing the graphite bits around like a normal eraser, it'll actually, I don't know, suck it up? I don't know how to describe it. I don't know, it's different from a normal eraser in that it doesn't push the stuff around, it draws it inside of itself. Alright, so here we can start painting and stuff. So what I'm using for paint is the red stuff is actually a protective enamel paint, normally used for like industrial stuff. And uh, for the silver parts at the top, I'm using it, you know, just crafters paint. I think it's like sparkly gray. That's not what it's called, but that's basically what it is. It's called silver, but yeah. Now, if you are going to be doing this, I don't really, I wouldn't recommend using this type of red paint because with the protective enamel, it basically ruined every paintbrush that I dipped into it. Because the protective enamel, after even after it's still wet, it's really hard to get out of the brushes just because the paint wants to grab onto itself. So it's basically impossible to get out of the brushes. So if you're going to be doing this, do not use this type of paint on this because it will destroy your brushes. 
With the painting, you'll want to do at least three to five coats, so it'll cover up all the black and all that good stuff. When you're painting, make sure to uh, try and stay within your lines as much as possible. I mean, I guess you don't want to stay within your lines. You kind of do want to go over them a little bit, just so it won't show up anymore. But just try to be as neat as possible with your painting lines. Should be good to go. Alright, so here I am starting to use the silver paint that I have. Again, this is just like regular crafter's paint that you could pick up at like Home Depot. Well, not Home Depot, more like Hobby Lobby. Yeah. Like stuff like that. You can just pick up a Hobby Lobby for, I don't know, like $5. If even that, maybe two. Yeah, so it's not expensive. It's just this little bottle of paint that you can grab and go. So that'll about do it for this video guys, uh, here's the finished product that you can look at. Honestly, I'm not 100% happy with it, probably more like 75 or 80%, I wish it could have turned out better, but if you guys end up doing this project, definitely make sure to leave a link in the comments to show everybody what you came up with and how yours turned out. So if you guys want to see any more videos of mine, definitely make sure to subscribe for any future content that I put out. And also make sure to check out the videos that I have over here on the right. And yeah, so that'll about do it, guys. I will see you in the next video.